So hi, good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture in statistics. So ngayon ang pag-uusapan natin is yung tinatawag nating mid, median, at saka mode. Okay? But we will answer the most important question. Okay? Na dapat alam na alam natin. Kailan ba dapat gamitin ang mean, median, at saka mode? Okay? So in this series lecture, we will answer that particular question. So let's get started. Okay, so yung mean, median, at saka mode is under siya sa tinatawag nating measures of central tendency. Okay? So, dalawa kasi yan. So, we have measures of central tendency at saka meron tayong measures of variation or measures of variability. Okay? So, but in this particular lecture, ang pag-uusapan natin is yung tinatawag nating measures of central tendency. Sir, ano ba yung measures of central tendency? Basically, guys, yung measures of central tendency are numbers. Okay? are numbers that will represent your data set. Okay? So, para lang yan yung mga classmate mo na, <laughs> di ba, for example, uh, may, uh, yung instructor mo, yung professor mo will ask, or oh, any volunteers or something like that, and then sa mga classmate, automatic, ako, something like that. So, this girl here, si Hermione, so will be the representative of that particular class. Okay? So, so parang ganyan lang yung, uh, yung, yung purpose ng tinatawag nating uh, central tendency measurements, yung mga measures. Okay? So, they will be the representative of your data set. Okay? So, for example, yung grades. Okay? Oh, oh by the way, for example, <laughs> ito yung mga classmate mo, di ba? So, yung mga tao na mga lang magawa sa buhay, yung nasa likod, of course, <laughs> okay, yung parang nagchichismis, eto siya naman, nagbo-volunteer <laughs> na naman, something like that. Okay? So, hindi naman natin masisi yung ginagawa ni Hermione kasi alam naman natin na in the outside world, survival of the fittest talaga. But as long as, as long as, uh, it is at the right place and at the right time. Okay? So, yan. So, let's go back dun sa pinag-uusapan nating measure of central tendency. So, yung uh, mean, median, at saka mode is a number. So, for example, in a data set, mean is a number that will represent your data set. Okay? Mode is a number that will represent your data set. So, yan. So, for example, uh, yung pag-uusapan natin is yung tinatawag nating arithmetic mean. Okay? So, yung arithmetic mean by definition here is a measure of central tendency. Okay? Sum of all the values divided by the number of values. So, usually called the mean. Okay? Or pinaka-common pa niyan, yung tinatawag nating average. Okay? So, called arithmetic mean to distinguish it from the geometric mean. Okay? So, yung mean na yan, we can express the mean in this formula here. So, yung sum of all the samples divided by all the number of samples. Okay? So, for example, may 20 grades ka. Okay? And then, yung total samples mo is 21. So, 20, yung value na yun, divided by 20. But you can also use this uh, formula here. So, x1 plus x2 plus that, 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 xn divided by the n. And the number, total, total number of size. Okay? So, or you can use this one. Yung formula na may sigma na, may sigma yung summation of xi, yan. yung parang, yung parang, sir, bakit natin pinahihirapin yan? Kasi, eto yung, yung nandito sa baba na ito is the official, is the, the formal way of expressing the mathematic, the mean in a mathematical format. Okay, this is the general format of the mean. So, why do we have to use this kind of very difficult, dif difficult mathematical expressions in our paper to make it more, scholarly. So, very important. Okay? So, yan. So, let's take a look at this particular uh, example here. So, okay. So, we have yung uh, days. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then, we have the time uh, time in minutes. So, let's assume na ito yung oras na, na kailangan mong spend from waking up. Okay? Uh, for example, Pagising mo, and then actually getting out of bed. Okay, and then you want to study kung gaano ka ba katamad in the morning. So, yan. So, tinatali mo. So, from the moment na, na gumana yung alarm mo, and then the moment na you really uh, tumayo ka para magsimula na yung araw mo. Okay, let's say day 1, 39 minutes. Day 2, 29 minutes. Day 3, so on and so forth. So, Ang gagawin mo ngayon, ang gusto niyang malaman is an average kasi maraming numbers yan. On average, ano ba yung 
uh, minutes, ilang minutes ba ako before uh, waking up, before kagising mo, sound of your alarm, and then actually getting out of bed. So, ang gagawin mo lang, simply, you have to get the average of these numbers, and then, yan. So, use this formula, mag maganda, isulat mo muna yung formula, and then substitute mo yung value, so 39, 29, plus so on, and so forth, divided by number of 10, kasi we have 10 samples in this particular case. I think you know that. So, 396 divided by 10, so you have 39.6 minutes. So, as simple as that. Okay? But yung question natin dito, guys, is when do we use mean, yung mean or average or arithmetic mean, compared dun sa tinatawag nating median? Okay? So, let's take a look at this example here para mas, mas maganda. So, we have 5, 10, 20, 10, 15, 5, 5, 5, 10, 10, 20. Okay? So, if we are going to get the mean of these particular numbers, so, divide mo lang. Okay? So, 100. Paano mo nalaman siya? No, 100, of course. Na-solve ko na yan ahead of time. So, just in case, double-check nyo na lang. So, assuming tama yung computation ko, this is 100. So, 100 divided by 10, kasi 10 yung samples natin. So, we have 10. Okay? So, madali lang. So, let's take a look at this second scenario here. So, yung second scenario natin, we have same number, but yung pinakadulo niya is yung 120. Okay? So, yung 120 natin is yung tinatawag natin extreme values. Okay? So, yung extreme values natin, Pwede nandun sa right side, yung sa positive side. Pwede din nandito sa, sa left side. Okay? So, in this particular case here, yung uh, extreme values natin is 120. Or yung tinatawag natin extreme values, normally, na, naririnig natin yan na they are considered outlier. Okay? But before we can consider a certain number as an outlier, we have to check it first. If it, it is really an influential value or an outlier. So, we will discuss that one pagdating natin dun sa normality distribution natin. But in this particular case here, we can say that this 120 is an extreme value kasi napakalayo niya compared to others. Okay? So, parang classmate mo ito na no matter how hard you study, mas mataas pa rin yung scores nyo compared to the rest of the class. So, so parang ganyan. Okay? So, if you will get the mean of this particular data set in sa scenario number 2 natin, so, ang mayayari niyan ngayon, so, so, yung total natin, so, if you're going, okay, so, yung mean natin in this particular case here is just equals, pag isam mo lang lahat, kunin, plus mo lang lahat, and then, divided by 10, that is 200 divided by 10, so, your mean in this particular case here is 20, okay? So, compare the difference, okay, isang value lang, yung uh, 120 lang natin dito, and it changes a lot, yung mean natin doubles, Okay? So, this is uh, this is how powerful yung tinatawag nating extreme value. So, that is why we need another statistical measures to, of central tendency na hindi siya resistant siya towards to uh, extreme value. So, dito napapasok yung tinatawag nating median. So, by definition, a median is a central tendency uh, middle value in an array. Okay? Middle value in an array. So, the median, so the median's position can be computed as n plus 1 divided by 2. So that is the rank values. Okay, so take note that it is the median's position, not the median itself. Okay, so let's take a look at this example here. So we still have, again, yung tinatawag yung second scenario natin, and then let's compare yung makukuha nating median, kung if it is really resistant to extreme values. So, Yung formula is, uh, yung median position is 9 plus 1 divided by 2, so that is 5. So, take note, 5 is not our median here. So, that is the fifth position. Okay? So, yan. So, ibig sabihin, 15 yung uh, median natin. Oops. Mali. Okay? Bakit mali, sir? Kasi, before you can consider na this is the median, lalo na if you're, not, if you're using it, using manual cal calculation, you have to consider yung arrangement ng, ng data mo. So, in this particular case, hindi pa siya in order from smallest to, to largest. So, kailangan muna natin yung i-rearrange. So, okay? So, yan. So, na-rearrange na siya and then yung fifth value natin is 10. So, yung media natin in the second scenario is 10. So, now, let's take a look and let's compare sa media natin 
compare dun sa mean na nakuha natin na walang extreme value. So, makita natin na in this particular case, in this particular scenario, it is similar. So, yung 120 na extreme value natin dun really did not matter. Okay? So, yan yung essence or importance ng uh, mean. Ah, yung median compared to mean. Okay? So, yan. Okay, now, so let's take a look at this example here. And then you want to get the median of this particular uh, scenario, data set. So, ang gagawin mo is, you get the median position, that is 10 plus 1 divided by 2, so that is 5.5. Okay, and then if you're going to count 5.5, yung 5.5 position mo is batal, nasa gitna. So, how are we going to do it? Okay, so to get the median, median, pag walang value na natamaan yung arrow natin, you just have to get the arithmetic mean of the two values yung nasa gilid niya. So, in this particular case here, the median is uh, 39 plus 40 divided by 2. So, that is 39.5. Okay? So, let's proceed yung sa tinatawag nating mode. Okay? Yung mode naman is a measure of central tendency which is the most frequent value. So, ito yung uh, yung, yung pinaka-common. <laughs> yung pinaka-common. So, it is similar dun sa, for example, pumunta ka sa party and then later on nakita mo yung suot mo pala is the same suot ng, ng best friend mo or yung same ng color dun sa uh, table cloth ba or something and then of course yung mga taong walang magawa sa buhay yan pinag-uusapan na naman kayo <laughs> so chismis na naman okay okay so wala tayong magawa dyan okay so let's take a look yung sa mode mode na so basically mode is just similar yung pinaka uh, frequent value in our data set. Okay? So, for example, in uh, calculating the mode, let's, let's, have, let's take a look at this scenario here. So, a company's information systems manager keeps track of the number of unplanned outages that occur in a month. So, calculate the mode of the following data which represent the number of unplanned outages during the past 12 months. So, we have the data set here. So, ang gagawin mo lang, isanapin mo lang yung pinaka paulit-ulit na value. So, para mas madali nating tingnan dyan, we have to rearrange our value in in a range order, in an ordered array. Okay, so 0, 0, 0. So, in this particular case here, madali na nating makita kung ano ba yung number na paulit-ulit. So, in this particular case here, the answer, the mode natin is 3. Okay, so based from our lectures a while ago, so what do you think is the best measure of central tendency? So, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Or if you have some questions or clarification, please comment and I will try to answer your questions as soon as I can. So good luck and God bless.